Hey guys, this is Charlie with Holly's Garage. Today I've got another furniture flip for you, but this time we're going to be making over this solid wood maple dresser that I got off of Facebook Marketplace for $50. It was in really good condition, however the side um, boards were splitting, so I'm going to show you how I fixed that in a little bit. But for now, I'm going to clean the piece with some Dawn dish soap in a spray bottle and then I just scrubbed it all over with a brush. Next, I'm removing the hardware with my electric screwdriver. Um, I actually probably should have done this first, but I'm doing it now. Now I'm going to address that split in the side with some wood glue. I noticed that this little wood wedge was keeping the dresser from going flat so I just removed that with a little uh, paint scraper and a hammer and then that seemed to do the trick. After it had dried overnight, I took off the clamps and then I cleaned off the dust with my vacuum and then I was ready to scuff sand the whole piece with 120 grit sandpaper. I knew I wanted to keep the top wood so I removed the finish on the top with some more sanding um, and then also the top drawers until I just got to bare wood. Do not be fooled, this actually took me over an hour to sand off the top so if you are planning to sand off your finish then just be prepared. Next, I filled in the hardware holes with some Bondo because these holes, they were only two and a half inches apart and most of my hardware is three inches. Next, I primed the parts that had wood show with some Kills spray primer because it is oil based so that'll block your bleed through. And then um, I also sprayed that onto parts that I thought would be kind of hard to get in with a brush and a roller, so that would include um, the trim as well. Next, I used my Zinsser Bullseye water-based primer on everything else with a brush, and then I rolled off with a roller. And this helps you get a smooth coat because it takes off any excess primer, and then I just used what was left on the roller to prime the frame. After that dried, I noticed that there was still bleed through so I hit it again with my oil based kills and then I sanded that down when it was dry. So you want to sand down every layer that you do with a fine grit because that is the key to getting a smooth and professional looking finish. It is kind of tedious but it does the trick and it is worth it. So after everything, I noticed that the boards, they still had it still had like a little gap, uh, so I grabbed my caulk. I could, <laughs> I could have used normal wood filler, but I guessed that if the wood were going to um, expand and contract just due to the seasons changing, um, it would be better to use something that's a little bit more flexible. Finally, it's time to paint. So I am going in with two coats of my Sherwin-Williams Opulence or Cashmere if you're from the States, and I'm doing it in a creamy warm white color. Um, it's a mist tint, 
but that's generally what tends to sell well in my area. I do want to use more fun colors, but today I am sticking with a neutral tone. Now the reason that I am using a sprayer but also a brush and a roller is because um, when I sand down every coat it knocks down all the textures so it all turns out pretty uniform. So this is after the second coat, coat of paint has dried. Um, and then I'm gonna smooth it all out with a fine grit sanding sponge and then we're gonna move on to top coat. It is time for some top coat and I am going to go in with some water-based polyurethane by Bear um, and I like to pour it into my gun with whatever's left in it so I essentially have like a tinted poly. Um, so we are almost done. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So I just went in with a super fine, um, like a sanding sponge and I've used this for, I don't know, probably like 20 projects now. So it's super, super fine. Um, just gonna go over everything and then we're gonna do a final coat of poly. probably going to just paint wash um, or stain this top part. Um, first I have to sand down all these little white edges, get everything all nice and clean again. Oh, 
I'm going to try to get rid of this sun faded area just with a little bit more sanding. Um, so I've hooked my Dewalt up. Um, I'm going to put a 180 sand net on it. And it's hooked up to my surf prep dust extractor. So let's go ahead and turn it on. So I just decided to paint this drawer because um, sanding wasn't doing the trick and I didn't have oxalic acid laying around so I just filled in the holes and then I primed, painted, and then I polyed. I want to lighten this wood up so I just mixed up um, the same paint to three parts water to create a little paint wash and all you have to do is brush it on, you let it sit for a little bit, and then you wipe off in the direction of the grain. This technique is so easy and that's why I love it. Just make sure that if you're doing this that you sand down the wood um, after it's dry because water will raise the wood grain. So after that was all dry, I cleaned out my gun and then I sprayed on some clear poly to protect the wood. Hey guys, so we are ready to spray um, the hardware. So what we're gonna do today, um, we're gonna go in first with this Rust-Oleum Antique Brass uh, spray paint and then we're gonna go over that with black and what that's gonna give us is like a nice little antique dark uh, metal. So let's put our masks on and I'll show you what I mean. I've been experimenting with custom finishes on my handles and I found that the key to getting a factory-like look is to use super thin coats of spray paint so that everything is even. And remember that you can always apply more, but you can't take it away. So that's kind of one of the big things that I've learned. Um, and that'll apply to a lot of aspects of furniture refinishing. Next, I measured where I wanted my hardware holes to be. But before I drill, I like to take the pointy end of a screwdriver and kind of punch a divot to where the hole would be. And that way it'll prevent your drill from slipping and putting a hole where you don't want it because the pointy part of your drill bit will kind of just sit and rest in the little crevice that you made. Oh, and another thing, if your screw is too long or if the head of your screw is too small for the hole, then use washers. It's a nice little spacer and it'll fill the empty gap um, and it'll also just kind of keep your screw head from just slipping out. So now I'm going to stage it and take some pictures for Facebook Marketplace. But in case you forgot how it looked before, here is how it started and here is what it's looking like now. The dresser looks so much better, it's so fresh and so clean, and I love the little ring pulls that I got off of Amazon. 
I can link them down below if you want to use them for yourself, but other than that, here she is all pretty. So that is it from me today. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like, or leave a comment if you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.